Thank you all for joining the Microsoft Teams of a New Way of Working webinar. Um, my name is Jacob Aldrop from Mail Manager, and uh, this we've put this webinar together really because we know obviously the, the use of Teams has, uh, has increased exponentially, and um, this webinar is designed for anyone who has been really struggling with it at any point. Um, anyone who's got a bit of Teams fatigue, shall we say, uh, and isn't quite sure kind of what communication tool for what purpose because now you know this is teams has become another thing for us all to deal with um, and as I say we know that many people out there um, have had to kind of um, had a bit of a baptism of fire into teams so the webinar is designed to take you through some really practical steps uh, to get the most out of it because it's become such an essential part of of um, of our working lives now um, so in terms um, in terms of an agenda um, delighted to be joined by Toby Chisnell, uh, Managing Consultant at Ridgeline Consulting. Um, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Jacob Wardrop. Uh, you may or may not have heard of Mail Manager before. Um, I, I basically work for a company which is owned by Arup, um, who created a solution called Mail Manager designed to help automate uh, the process of managing emails. Um, and uh, we've got Toby Chisnell joining us as well, who's our Teams expert and is going to hopefully make us all feel a little bit better about using it. So hi, Toby. Thanks very hi, much everyone. for joining us. <laughs> Um, uh, so uh, in, terms, in terms of an agenda, these are the key things we're going to cover. Uh, how you can use Teams, how to reduce the kind of overwhelming feeling we have at the moment. Now we've got, you know, you might have to deal with email, Skype, uh, collaboration sites, maybe Slack, Teams, uh, as well as WhatsApp and that sort of thing. So we're going to go through some advice on how to use Teams, but also when to use Teams as well. Um, managing documents in Teams and what sort of documents we should be putting in there and what, what sort we shouldn't. Um, some advanced tips around incorporating actions and planning into, into Teams. And then the final kind of uh, piece of, uh, of the webinar which we'll cover is how to incorporate email uh, to try and centralize information. Because one of the things which we know uh, lots of people experience is lots of disconnected pots of information um, but they have an overriding aspiration to have kind of all of their documents, emails, chats, and information relating to a project in in one place. So we'll kind of talk to you about about how to potentially potentially get there. Um, one of the things which I wanted to try and sort of understand really was just um, a bit of uh, a, a bit of kind of feedback on everyone's use and experience of Teams so far. So I'm going to launch a poll, which uh, basically uh, just asks you a question around what your um, what your experience of Teams has been so far. So um, what we'll do is just we'll uh, press launch to polling for this. And you should have um, there'll be uh, kind of two questions there. So just sort of focus on the first one first, and then there's a second one which we'll cover at the end. But be really interested to hear uh, kind of it, I suppose what your feedback's been so far. I'm sure some people love it, um, some people might have had enough of it, uh, and some people might just accept it as a bit of an unnecessary, un unnecessary evil. Um, interesting results coming in so far. So we've got. Um, just out of, um, I suppose, uh, pure um, pedanticness, it, I thought it'd be worthwhile pointing out why we're not doing this webinar on Teams, um, which Toby will help uh, help provide some background to. But effectively, um, there's uh, Zoom, which is obviously a webinar platform, is designed for the kind of attendee numbers which we which we have on this, whereas uh, Teams is uh, is kind of maxed out at 250. So um, delighted that so many of you have joined us. Thank you very much. If you've got kind of uh, competing demands such as uh, screaming children and homeschooling and all of that sort of thing um, appreciate you have actually taken time out of your day to have a look at this so um, yeah um, well, let's uh, I'll just end the polling now thank you for them so looks like there's a bit of a mix of about half half of our audience uh, finding it okay a uh, small percentage loving it and then a slightly smaller percentage really really struggling with it so um, uh, you know there's kind of a good 80 80 80 percent of you uh, who will definitely take some really actionable tips from this for the other for the other 20 percent I think some of the advanced stuff which we're going to cover hopefully helps as well as uh, helping you come up with some standards on how people should use this so anyway I've probably waffled on enough so Toby um, kind of introduce who you are and uh, why you're here to help 
Sure. So, um, yeah, I'm sure uh, a few of you may have heard of us before, but I'm sure the majority of you haven't. So Ridgeline Consulting, we're a specialist organisation that supports um, people, organisation and technology change for businesses within the AAC industry. Uh, we do everything from developing strategy right the way through to restructuring or, pro or process re-engineering through to, through to end user training. Uh, it's interesting that you know, given the situation that the first team session we were asked to do was about sort of a uh, 24 hours after uh, after the lockdown was announced a few weeks ago. Um, since then, I've trained about 250 people or so uh, on Microsoft Teams. Um, I, we come at it from a very much user's perspective to try and get the users to get the best out of best out of Microsoft Teams. We do offer a full a full training course on Microsoft Teams as well, which is about an hour and a half long. But what we're going to do today is to give you some tips uh, around Microsoft Teams, and hopefully you'll pick some uh, pick some pick some good tips and tips and tricks up about Microsoft Teams. So that's a little bit of who we are. So um, Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams. Um, it's Microsoft Teams is part of the Microsoft 365 suite. So whether you have that in your organization or not is, um, is, is I'm sure if some of you have been using Teams, you may have, may have it or may not have it because it has been offered free since, uh, since, the, since the lockdown uh, by Microsoft. But it's really used with sort of four key areas, really. It's primarily a communication tool and it's around primarily used for collaboration and teamwork. It can also be used for time management and it can also use, be, be, be used for task management. It does help teams collaborate on key tasks, stay organized, share documents, and have conversations. And the key thing is all, all, this, all this is in one place. So that's a little bit, a bit of the sort of the kind of, kind of the, the purpose behind Teams. Just, uh, just while Toby's going on to the next slide, if any of you have any questions at any point, please um, use, there's a Q&A facility in the Zoom window. So uh, uh, if you could type your questions in there, we'll endeavor to answer all questions by the end, uh, at the end of the webinar. Thanks. Uh, so, sorry, Toby. That's no, fine, no problem. So how can you use um, Microsoft Teams? So Teams is part of one of the sort of three key uh, communication tools we're from, from Microsoft. So. Teams is used for what they call the inner loop. So around the project team, it's very, it, you create a team for people we work with regularly, collaborate with, run effective meetings and projects, and you can also use it for task manage as well, management as well. Yammer, which is sort of the item outside on the, uh, outside on the gray box, Yammer is a tool which is allowed for you what they call the, out, the outer loop around connecting people um, across the business. And it's why it's, it's very sort of a social media orientated platform for, uh, for, for a business. Um, and email, of course, we're work, working with a mail manager today. So uh, let's not, let's not uh, forget about email. Email um, is still going to be there. It will still be around. Teams won't replace it. But what you'll probably find, and actually a couple of customers of mine that I've introduced or trained teams and teams and teams to recently, um, noticed a massive switch of how they're using email based on based on what's happened over the last few weeks and actually what we've got is we've got email becoming more targeted and focused around specific things and around potentially sometimes sharing of information as well but teams is really for around those people that you work with regularly so that's where it sits within the microsoft uh, microsoft suite of applications just move on to the next slide that's me there we go so first top tip so as i said um i pulled out some of the top tips from from our from our training session but i've got a, a whole host of top tips for you today um the first one's around meeting preparation uh i myself have been working virtually uh, and face to face for um for well, probably close to 10 years now and what you'll find is that and you probably have found this for those of you who are fairly new to it that a virtual meeting shouldn't really be any different from a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, don't, don't forget to prepare for a meeting. Don't forget to try and engage people. And if you have lots of applications or files that you need to open during that time where you might have shared them before, you know, passing them around the table, don't forget to prepare for those, prepare those up front. And it's quite a, quite a simple tip, but it's quite a useful tip as well. So, so this, for example, this meeting today, 
I made sure that I was preparing about half an hour beforehand. I'd run through the run through the slides, make sure everything was working with Jacob as well. So just really important to make sure you prepare properly for properly for a meeting. For those of you who aren't already sick to death of uh, sick to death of meetings. So first top tip um, I'm going to bring you to. So I'm going to jump out of the slides now. Um, worth pointing out is that I'm sure Jacob will send out for all those that attended. We'll send out the meet the slides too. Um, so all the top tips that you'll you'll um, you'll see today, um, I'll explain them to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show dem rather demonstrate to you them within 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 Teams itself. So let's come out of there. Just let me escape. No, it's not there. Okay, here we go. So first, first top tip, um, availability. So I've moved my mouse for those of you who can't see, I've just, just moved this box away. For those of you who see, I've just moved my mouse up to the top right hand corner and clicked on, uh, clicked on, my, clicked on my picture. Uh, the first one, the second tip that I'm gonna give you is around showing you, your, showing the availability. So available, um, is so if you wonder what that dot is in the right hand sort of the sort of bottom right hand corner of people's profiles it's just showing the status of what they are so available it means when you are available you don't have anything in your calendar and it means you're at you you're you're available for chats uh, chats within chats within teams busy the next one down is when you want to focus on something and you don't want notifications to pop up I'll talk to you about notifications. That's probably one of the most uh, most useful tips that I'll give you today um, around around how to turn on and off notifications. But busy, busy. If you change your status um, uh, to busy, it means that notifications won't uh, won't won't pop up. Um, do not disturb. That's probably the one where you actually don't want any notifications whatsoever. Um, I tend to again when I'm in a meeting uh, or presenting as I am today, is show do not disturb. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty, uh, pr 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 pretty good one. You won't get any notifications pop up in the right hand corner or within the or within the chat the chat window. Um, be right back, um, especially as we're working virtually now, um, or have been for over sort of the last uh, last few weeks. It's probably it's quite nice if you are if you are engaging regularly with with um, your team via Teams or via other methods. It's quite useful to to say actually look, I'm just just popping away. I've got to go and. Uh, Get, sort the kids out, or I've got to go and make a cup of tea. So it's quite a good, uh, good, good, good status to use. Um, appear away is an automatic notification. So what will happen if you haven't been at your PC for more than ten minutes? Um, teams will automatically switch to uh, switch you to appear away. So um, that's for, for you know first few tips for you there. So around around the status. And if you ever wonder what that bottom right hand, that dot in the bottom right hand corner of people means, it's around their uh, their availability and their status. Um, one of the probably the most questions that I get asked is, how do you turn notifications off? Um, again, actually I'll click away from that. Again, if I click on my picture, in the, oh, it's disappeared completely. There you go. It's, uh, if I click on my picture and go to settings. So again, top right hand corner, click on settings. Um, you'll get the settings tab. Um, I click on, on notifications and some of these have a few options. So some, depending on what they are, will you have some, some will have more, more options than, uh, more options than others, but there are four options. So banner and email banner only show in feed and off. So what this, what, what this means, banner and email means that it will show a banner message, um, which is the bottom right hand corner pop up in the bottom right hand corner. I'm sure everyone has seen it. The pop up comes up. That's a banner banner message. Also, um, email. Obviously, it will send you an email saying when someone has mentioned you or someone's trying to contact you. Will also send you a send you an email. Banner is the, that's just that's just a pop up in the bottom bottom right hand corner. Only show and feed. What that means is that you will be sent your activity feed. Now I'm just going to close that for a second. So your activity feed is in the top right hand corner, uh, sorry, top left hand corner of your of, of the of the screen, and any any messages messages that you that pop up will be within this feed. So go back to, go back to uh, my settings again. Go back to notifications. Um, off means uh, off. So if you don't want anything um, anything to pop up, just turn your turn your notifications off. I wouldn't recommend turning 
all of them off if i'm honest with you because you don't know what's what someone's trying or maybe trying to get hold of you or trying to message you the whole purpose of teams is that you collaborate more virtually um but you collab you collaborate more um notifications can help you to sort of achieve sort of get that information and achieve 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 that sort of a collaboration so that's one thing i do get but most of the time you're saying well how do i turn them off so any click on any options you can generally turn them off um, unless someone mentions you, I don't think there's any only channel mentions, and I'll talk to you about channels in the in a, in, a, in, a, in the next bit. So just um, that, there's been a load of questions come in, so thanks very much for them. I'm just mindful we I don't I don't want us to uh, I don't I don't want to leave us with kind of um, uh, 50 to do by the end of the webinar. So a um, couple of quick questions sure. which have come in just on this topic, Toby. Yep. Um, uh, one is uh, from Claire. Uh, thanks, Claire. So what's the difference between busy and do not disturb in, 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 in a practical kind of context? B busy and do not disturb. Do not disturb. I think from a practical perspective, when I've used do not disturb is that I don't want notifications and I don't want people to contact me. I'm in a webinar like, like now, for example, where I'm presenting. I don't want anyone to, um, to, 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 to disturb me busy is you're working or something or something is, is, is in with your calendar but you are available to someone messaging you or something like that so that's from a practical context okay and does that help claire that, i hope yeah hopefully that helps that helps claire uh, you can um, uh, you can uh, put it in the, there's a chat facility as well uh, for kind of um, any any feedback on the answers um another question which has come in which is can your outlook calendar automatically change your availability uh, or the status i suppose is is um is perhaps yes um, that question. yes so so there are a number so available if you don't have something in your outlook calendar it will show you as available um, again going back to claire's point you can set yourself to busy in that instance if you're if you're working on something um, equally if you've got something that you don't want to present you know again go back to do not disturb if you if you don't want anybody to contact you just put it on do not disturb i'm busy um, so sometimes you know you do have blank spots in your calendar for those lucky lucky, lucky people out there um, but if you're working on something that's potentially when i would use uh, use, use busy Okay, and then a couple of other quick fire questions. One is, uh, if you've got Teams on your phone and your laptop, does the uh, status automatically um, does the uh, status automatically appear as away? Um, that's from Alice. I'm not sure if I've sort of um, interpreted the question. Um, I, th I think I think I understand what you're after. So, d does it sync? Is probably the possibly the the answer you're looking for. So, with if you've got Teams on your phone or on your laptop it is automatic so you can change your status on your phone you can st change your status um within within the desktop app which is what which is what i've got uh, got it got in got in front of me so so yes it they, they sync automatically together i hope that's the answer because i'm trying to interpret that as well jacob okay uh, feel alice feel free to put that um in the uh, kind of a slightly longer message in the chat facility and we'll come back to that again at the end uh no there's not there's one other question on creation of teams which i think we are going to cover so we'll cover that at the end uh, yep. tristan if that's okay uh, and then one bit of feedback uh, that that section alone was worthwhile so um good stuff, <laughs> oh, Toby. Great. Thank you. Excellent. excellent so thanks john jacob uh, i'm just making a note now <laughs> yeah yeah so so i'm just making note there was something there that we need to make sure that we show people creation creating teams uh, yeah. yeah, so in the okay. case of uh, kind of it being controlled centrally by IT, can we sort of set up, I think it might be different channels. Um, but, okay, um, yeah. But yeah, thanks for the feedback, John. Yeah, so yeah. So hopefully, again, I've in in the notes, all the banner and email and show only in feed, et cetera, and what all those options mean are in the, are in the training notes. But um, those are... Those notifications I generally get uh, get, uh, get get asked a lot of, which is why I tend to do them up front. So um, I'm going to move to channels now, and here's a here's a tip for you. So here's 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 in best Blue Peter fashion. Here's some I created earlier. So within a team, so on the left hand side, you can be belong to a number of teams. Um, within your team, you have something called channels. So in this one, I've got quite a lot. And within the Teams one, I've only got one called General. When you create a team for the first time, it creates it automatically creates a general channel, which is uh, accessible to everyone in the team. You can, if I um, 
I think I've got one on here. If I've got one, and if not, no, I can create one. Um, you can also create a, um, a, a private channel for specific people within a, within a team. And I'll show you how to do that uh, in a little bit once we, when we create a new team. Uh, towards the end of the session, I'll, 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 I'll create, create, create that for you. So what you've got to remember, and this is one thing with, with you know, being bombarded with the amount of communication uh, sort of applications that we have, not just Teams from a business perspective and from a personal perspective. You know, if you think of all the things we've got, we've got LinkedIn, we've got Twitter, we've got WhatsApp, we've got Teams, we've got, you know, we've got potentially got Slack, Trello, stuff like that. So what I would do is my recommendation is think about when you create a team, think about the channels that you might want. Now you might only want one channel, um, but if you're working on a project, for example, which you know the AAC, AAC industry is built up around projects, that you might want to break that project down into separate channels. If you've got, I've deliberately done this one here, um, I've got a whole bunch of options um, for this channel. If I'm getting mentioned, um, uh, in sort of, let's say, 25 different channels. That could be quite complicated and trying to, trying to find that information. You can do it through activity or where you've been mentioned, but think about what you want the team to do and to think about the structure of the team. No different as you would do, would do normally. Um, personally, um, I've found uh, the number of channels around sort of, sort of five, between five and 10. If you're getting to more than 10, you're starting to, you're starting to go, actually, if I get mentioned in 10 different channels, where's my information? And this is used from, it's not used from Teams, but I've used um, other, other things like Slack. I was on a very large project uh, a couple of years back, which had, I think, 265 people in the project team using one of the, you know, one of the communication tools. There were about, within the project team, because it was a huge project, huge global project, um, there are about, I think there are well over 150 teams. I was getting mentioned in something. Could I find where I was getting mentioned or what I was required to do? No. So, so do 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 have a think about sort of uh, teams and uh, team teams and channels and how your team is structured. Jacob, I'm just going to pause there because I saw some questions coming in. So um, I think it's okay. There's a couple. Uh, Claire's uh, just said thanks. So I think we're we're kind of okay to move on. There's a, there's a few which I think even I can answer. So I'll uh, I, I'll I'll take them. Um, just uh, yeah, uh, continue. Okay. So no problems. So that's teams and channels. So just a little tip. Do think about how you how you structure a team and how you structure your structure your channels. Can't tell you what the best way to do it is because it really is project specific or team specific of, of how many you do. But do, as I said, my, my, probably my tip is do, do have a think about how many, uh, how many, um, how many channels that you, you, you do have. So um, when you come into a team, you'll see your main board. Um, this is the primary communication board. And I've just put in here. This is this is for this is for training. I put in a whole bunch of sort of sort sort of comments. If there are multiple people replying, you'll see their names appear as well on the left hand side. You can use it for commenting on. You can use it for sharing documents or asking for feedback. You can use it for chasing people's actions, which I'll talk to about talk to you about in a, in, a, in a short while. You can also use it um, for uh, for polls as well. So here's one I created here. Should we work from home more? Yes, maybe, or no, get me out of here. The kids are driving me nuts. Um, I know which one my vote would go for. It's not the top two. So, um, so yeah, one thing I would say is the one thing I have noticed for those people that are fairly new to Teams is that I put a, deliberately put a document up here is, um, you know, someone's mentioned this would be a, a member of my team. Uh, thanks for the document. Document. Um, uh, I've got some comments on it. So if I was a team member and posted that, a um, little bit of good practice, which document are you talking about? So my top tip here is, uh, is if you're talking to about a, about a specific document that's been posted, reply within the thread. Don't go and create a new thread. I have seen that quite a lot. It can be really frustrating, especially if you get a lot of got quite a few people in your team. Um, you can have, you know, you know, potentially hundreds of messages here. 
try and reference the document, try and link the document, etc. Um, but best, best of all, try and reply reply here. Reply in this in it, within the thread is my. Uh, um, one my quest, one question which has come in, and uh, as mentioned, I'm a I'm a kind of bit of a, um, a novice in this area as well. Uh, so, can a post be deleted if needed? Which I think is probably great question. That, great question. I was I wasn't going to show you that, but it's quite easy to show you that. So, deliberately, um, I reply in within the thread. Completely poor English because I was typing far too quickly, concentrating on what I was saying. I can edit that thread if I wanted to. So I can edit it. Um, and change it if it's come on apply from and just click on there if i want to delete something um let's um let's delete the one i've just put up here so click on there um another sort of tip for you i i'm so i've been using teams for quite some time now so i kind of forget this is quite a quite a good tip but the three dots um anytime you see a three three dots within teams it gives you um it gives you more options to choose from and in this case, um, thanks for the document, I've got some comments on it. Can I delete it? The answer is yes, you can. Now, obviously, I would say obviously, not so obviously, the person, the only person that can delete it is the is the author. So um, if I was trying to, if someone else had replied within, within this team, I couldn't delete their post. So um, again, one thing to be uh, conscious of, be, be careful of what messages you put out there. You know, we are in a we are in a world where we uh, we share lots of information. Sometimes information you wish you'd uh, wish you'd never been nev never uh, never posted. Um, as they say, don't ever send an email on it or based on emotion. It's exactly the same within a team. If you're wound up about something, you know, go and take a break before you post it. <laughs> so another another tip for you there. I have Great seen advice. some. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The amount, amount of times I have, I have, I've walked away from an email. Best decisions I've ever made. So, uh, so yeah. So that's another another little tip. So yes, you can. Um, I'll go up to one of these. Is that you can you can uh, edit, edit, delete, etc. Anything anything that's posted. But again, it is the it's the author that can 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 only do within that. Just by clicking, moving to the right hand corner, and clicking on the three the th the three dots. So. There we go. There's some. Um, that's another tip for you. Um, one also thing that um, is, if you're fairly new to Teams, is not is not particularly widely known, is the the file section. So one thing that you do need to be aware of is that when you create a team, it automatically creates a SharePoint site in the background. So um, one thing I will say is that whatever files that you put within the team, they are within that specific team they're not in your you know your shared drive or your shared folders or your sharepoint sites or uh, they have they are specific specific to that to the, to to that uh, that area if you have um, especially if you're running projects and you've used teams to, uh, to, to uh, you know to use a team to set up a project one thing i would say is once that is project has finished um, make sure all the documents are moved to your central storage location so, um, so it because it does create a SharePoint site, but you do need to. I would recommend you moving them out. It shouldn't replace your organization central storage point. So another 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 tip tip for you there. Um, I've put a couple of um couple of a uh, couple of uh, files in here. This one is really difficult to demonstrate. Um, but one of the really good things that um sort of I've used quite a number of times once I found out the functionality was that multiple people can work on the same document at the same time. Um, can't show you the multiple people today, but I'll explain how it, how it works and I'll show you how you can comment on a document. So again, um, what I've done for those who didn't see, because I was probably a little bit too quick, uh, next to this document, this is the webinar slides that we, um, Jacob and I were working on. Click on the three dots, click on open, and it gives you a number of options. Open in PowerPoint online, open in PowerPoint, that's your desktop version, editing teams. I'm choosing, gonna choose editing teams. And I know one of the slides has got um, some comments on it. It's uh, all got some ty type typos on it. It's uh, 
So I know automatically that somebody has been working on this document uh, because, or well, they've commented on this document because underneath the number nine, for those that you can see, by the way, guys, as we just would point out, I've, I do, do do webinars off uh, quite a large, a large screen. So if you can't say anything or you want me to zoom into something, just let Jacob know in the chat window and uh, I can zoom into something if you can't see, see something because some of the icons sometimes a little bit too small. So someone's commented on this slide. I, I know it was me because I, I says I set it up for, uh, before one, just want to explain the comments function, which is here. Um, close on that. Um, and I also need to check this document for typos. Here's some I did deliberately set up earlier so I can change that. Now, if it was me doing this, that's for absolutely fine. But what you can do is that you can have a number of people um, on this doc managing this document at a time um, you can also uh, mention people so I can type in any so if I, any time that you when you when you comment something within your chat window or within the chat or within a comment section um, um, you can uh, you could you, you, you could that person will get receive the message so just bear with me a sec post that now if Annie's got uh, her, um, her her email switched on or a notification switched on um, that she will get she will get that message um, equally if someone has been working on something what it does is see this little pink box here you'll get a number of people a, a box pop up with a number of people working on the particular section so as I said it's really difficult to demonstrate multiple people working on a document but you can do it in teams it is really really useful So it's come out just, just while Toby's moving on to the next uh, next slide, if there's anything which um, anyone wants to uh, kind of uh, either re look over or ask other or see again at the end, uh, you know, please uh, at the end just feel free to kind of say, "Is there right, have another, another look at this?" Uh, but we will have um, we will obviously share the recording as well. Yep. Okay. No problem at all. Yeah. No problem at all. We've got we've got we've got we've got, got, got we've got we've got plenty plen plenty of time. So, um, one of the things that was asked within the chat window: How do I create a team? Now, there are this, this is a this is this is this is this, this is an interesting one. You can belong. As hopefully you can see my top right hand side. So, I'm within the moment. I'm within the team within Ridgeline Consulting. That's my organisation that I belong to. Um, I am also a member of a couple of, uh, I'm a member of external teams. I can tell that I'm external because I'm a guest in them. Um, one thing that you will see that if you are a guest in certain organizations, you will have limited functionality. Um, I won't show you because if I do this, I'll lose all the stuff that I'm just about to show you. But if I flick to, flick to cast, for example, um, I'm a member of one of their external teams and I only get only get the sort of chump chat functionality and see the member that see what teams I'm a member of. I don't get all the full full functionality as an administrator as I do within within my own organization. So if you're a member if you're external member, if you're an external member, you won't be able to create a team. But if you're within your organization, unless your IT department have locked it down, you should be able to join or create a team. And that's what I'm going to do now. It's, uh, so bottom left hand side, it's where it says join or create a team. I'm going to create a team from scratch. Um, or I can create one from an Office 365 group or team. I'm just going to create one from scratch here. And I can make uh, the team either public or private. Um, private means people need permission to join. Public means that anybody could join it or go and search for it. Um, in this case, I'm going to make, make it private. Um, Test team. So give it a, give it a, a, a logical name uh, description. You can put a little description in there. Should you should you should you wish to do so? Click on create. And here I can, I've got the option to add members to a team. Should I wish to do so? So here's a good tip for you. Um, you can may uh, you can invite internal members just by typing their name or you can invite external people as well by typing in their email address, assuming your IT, haven't, IT department haven't locked it down. But I can invite, so um, if I type in Annie, she'll, she'll pop up, click on Annie, 
and she'll become part of that part of that group. You do have an option, um, owners and members, when you invite people, an owner um, gives you a bit more privilege, access rights, member gives, will, will, you'll be able to do most things within teams, you just won't be able to create or add people within, within the team. In this case, I'm just gonna make Annie a member, click on close. And here we go, on the left hand side, I've now created my team. You can, by the way, change the, uh, change the change the sort of uh, the TT as it says test team here and change the color of a team should you wish to do so haven't got time to show you that today and it can be a little bit complicated but you can change it um, one thing so that one, I do want to so, so, sorry to cut across you there so yeah. one question uh, which may uh, which may come up is if your IT team has locked down the ability to create teams yeah. but you may be you may be uh, one question which has come in is kind of can you set up your within a team can you kind of set up your own private mini team almost which I think um, yeah a, a, might be the sort of chat should people create channels there or what, what should they do you so it... <laughs> You, so it's a good. That's a good question. There's a couple of questions within there, Jacob. So, if I'm not sure why your IT department should stop you creating teams, um, the whole purpose of teams is so you create small groups of people to deliver specific activities. That's the whole point of point of a team. Um, however, if they have done so, you could, if you you could, unless they've locked this down again, you can add additional channels, and uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm going to show you now. So. Within here, um, to answer your question, if they have locked it down and you want to create like a mini private team, the first thing that I would do is probably add a, ch uh, add, add a channel. Again, so at my highest level, I'm clicking on the three dots and it just gives me the option to add a channel. So click on add channel. Um, I'll give it the really rubbish name of new channel. Um, again, description. And here's an interesting one, standard, uh, accessible to everyone who's on that team or make it private. I'll show you the difference. Private means it's only accessible to a specific people within the team who you then invite. And uh, it's just adding that channel. Now, again, if I want to, I can, I can type in the people that I want to join. Um, if it's external, you type in their, type in their email address, assuming they haven't got, they haven't got locked down. And I can tell it's private, a private channel straight away because it's got a little, pay, uh, little little padlock next to it. So only people that have got access to it will be able to see, see that channel or be invited to it. Hopefully that answers both the questions, Jacob. Yep, great, good stuff. Thanks, Toby. So is there any other questions that have come in, by the way, Jacob? Uh, I think we'll just cover, we'll cover some of them at the end. Obviously, you know, mindful. Okay. Um, uh, great to see so many of you on here. And uh, yeah, please do keep, keep questions coming. Uh, okay. Kind of uh, um, mindful of, it, of everyone's time as well. Yeah, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, show you my last, my last tip before I hand over to, uh, to Jacob in a second. Um, one of the, really powerful function functionality of teams is that you can add additional functionality through what they call apps um, you see a little button on the bottom left hand corner called apps if you have got uh, that the relevant access rights equally within a team you've got a plus symbol um, if i click on the plus symbol there you'll see a whole bunch of apps um, come up now i'll be completely honest with you i have most a lot of the idea of hardly any idea of what most of these do however i'll show you one of my absolute favorite ones it's called planner um, planner and i've called it actions and i'll show you how to create a new plan in a minute planner is a really really excellent uh, piece of functionality. There is a separate app called Microsoft Planner, um, but you can get Planner within Teams as well. Um, it is one of the Office 365 suite. So if you have got Microsoft 365, you can have access to the desktop version, as we call it, of Planner, but equally you can have it within Teams as well. And what this does is it has a number of what they call buckets at the top where you have a high level sort of a description of what you're trying to do. Here I've just made some up. I've deliberately made some that have got made, made it red because they're late. So I've got a couple of bu uh, buckets here of what we need to do to do deliver training. I can add new buckets should I wish to do so. Um, this is your main board, but what I find really useful, really, really useful, if we are trying to manage teams, activities and tasks, um, you can click on the chart section and say, okay, what have we got to do here? 
So um, there are some tasks that are unassigned. I, some people haven't done them, so I can just use my filter here and say, actually, I'm gonna have a look at all the unassigned tasks and oh, back on that, sorry. Click away. Um, these haven't been assigned to anyone. So I'm gonna assign uh, someone to that. I'm gonna assign uh, Annie to that, should be grateful for that. And click on that and I'm going to on here, I'm going to assign, assign myself to that task. Um, so you can quickly assign people, you can quickly manage people's tasks. You can also see if there are any, if there are, if there are any late tasks, tasks as well. Uh, um, worth pointing out, because I've got a filter on, um, you won't see it, but if I clear the filter, um, I can see which ones, are, which ones, which ones, I've got a number of late tasks here. They also come up in red. If you've got a lot of tasks, I can filter just on the late tasks as well of what those of, of, of what the, what those are. If I can go back again, click away, and uh, and 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 see which late tasks are. Um, I personally have used Planner for probably best part of a year now, um, both the desktop app and within Teams. Um, I I've run a lot a large project on it. We had eight work streams. We had buckets for each of the work streams, and I managed people's activities with it. Um, I also haven't used you, you, with th with that and another Microsoft product called OneNote. I haven't used uh, a Notepad um, in over a year as well. So I've actually changed my way of working just through just through using Planner, just through using OneNote um, uh, to 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 take to take to take notes. So that's um. That's sort of the sort of the top tip as as uh, sort of the last top tip for you. Um, as I said, we do offer full training as well. Should you uh, should you should you need, want further further training? But Jacob, shall I hand over um, to you now? Yeah, thanks, Toby. Really helpful. A, while you're in, whilst you're in Teams, there's a few questions which sure. are definitely worthwhile covering. So um, the planner looks really interesting. I mean, one question from me is, how does that work from your mobile? Because if you don't need to use a notepad, then how does that work? Ah, from so <laughs> uh, I, I could demonstrate it. So planner, so planner within Teams, you've, there's two options for it. So planner has its own app. So it's on on Android or within iOS. Um, it uses it, it works exactly the same. Um, within Teams, you just click on, there's three dots you go to, which says more within the app itself. And you can see, basically see, um, what you'll see on the mobile is just basically bucket by bucket. And you can scroll through, scroll through as you would do on, a, on the desktop version. So, um, so yeah, it's both mobile and, and, and for desktop. Okay, great. And uh, one question from Brian: uh, Why can't I add the Planner app to a private channel? Oh, that is a really good question. Let's try that, Brian. Never tried that before. Um, let's click on the plus symbol. Let's see if we can cl click on. Um, there's right. two. Uh, Matthew has asked the same question as well, which is kind of preventing them from um, or uh, present uh, representing an issue. If I can get my words out. Um, or their rollout of Teams? That is a really good question. Why can't you add Planner to a, I can't do it either. I have no idea on that one. I'll have to get, Brian, I'll have to get back to you and email you separately. Um, it might require a Google on that one. I thought you should be able to do that. Um, I suspect, knowing Microsoft, um, I suspect the reason they've done it is because the Planner is for the whole team, not for specific, not for specific people. Um, I suspect there may be a way of doing it. Um, if you uh, may, may be a setting within uh, within Microsoft that you can you can you can you can uncheck it basically. But yeah, um, that's just my that's just my hunch. But yeah, I don't know why. I've never seen that before either. So um, um, yeah, there's a there's a couple of questions on it creating teams with external people in terms yep. of uh, kind of I think you've you've shown some of that already in terms yep. of your, your example with cast. But then um, another question off the back of that is do the ex does the external person need to have their own uh, Office 365 account? Um, no. So since the lockdown, Microsoft have made Teams free. So so anybody can uh, access Teams. Uh, from a free from a free perspective, so they don't need to have. So a lot of organisations are on 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 the G Suite on Go on Google's Google's applications. Um, however, far majority of people I've come across are on are on Microsoft Suite. Some organisations may not be on 365. Um, if they're not, I would thoroughly recommend them 
thinking about changing to that um, because the additional functionality it gives you. Um, but yeah, it's, but you can, you can, if they haven't got teams, you can, external people can, can uh, uh, join the team just by typing, just by typing in their external email address um, into it. That is assuming um, uh, your IT department haven't locked it down. Some departments you need need to get need to notify that we are we are um, we, we're allowed. We, we want to invite this person into a team, and it's just a question of just maintaining that security and putting their domain into a setting. It doesn't take long. Most IT departments should be able to do it in a matter of seconds. Yeah, I think there's probably from IT teams uh, uh, across the world. Really, there's probably a little bit of um, nervousness, you know, with any new platform to try and uh, yep. gain uh, or retain some level of control over it. Although, uh, from what you're saying, the kind of overriding emphasis of teams is is for things to be the kind of opposite to that and a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, I mean, still you've got to be very wary of security as well. So, I mean, one thing that I've got set up within the Ridgeline organisation is I've got to make sure that anybody that we invite externally their domain is no one outside um one thing that i would also recommend from an it perspective is that you shouldn't be out people with um you know a hotmail account or a gmail account it should be a business business domain as well that's probably the sort of standard practice that most it departments put in and i would recommend putting those in as well because you know you can be sharing could potentially be sharing sensitive information. So again, be wary of who you're sharing with, make sure that make sure the email address is, is, is legitimate. I'd be very surprised to be honest with you, if you are inviting someone to a team that that, that email address isn't a legitimate email address um, because most people won't know, you know, won't know about a team unless you invite them. Great, thanks Toby. Uh, there's a couple of other questions which will come to at the end. I can also see a hand raised uh, from Tristan. So Tristan, if you uh, if you want to use the chat facility um, and then uh, we can kind of try and uh, cover off a question, uh, your, your question there. Um, if not, then feel free to kind of stay on the webinar for um, five minutes um, after, after the end. Um, but yeah, if you just, uh, if I press share, um, yep. I should then... I'll, I'll stop sharing Jacob's so. now. Okay. Thanks, Toby. Really, really helpful. So if I just um, press share here, everyone should be seeing my um, my screen. Um, so one of the questions which is coming up is where does Teams fit alongside all of our current day-to-day -day project communication? Because as we've seen, it can represent another silo if it's not implemented or used correctly. Um, but also, I think there was probably lots of IT teams uh, out there who maybe thought Teams was going to kind of take over the world and completely get rid of email. Um, whereas certainly what we're seeing at Arup and what Toby's seeing across the marketplace is that Teams is designed for people who are trying to run really short, efficient, effective internal collaboration and as well as external collaboration for some of the informal communication, which may have previously previously lived in Skype uh, or maybe previously lived in emails which probably didn't need to live in emails um, but something where you want to collaborate with a small group of people uh, and maybe share a document which you know kind of needs to be worked on and commented in a really really quick and speedy speedy fashion Teams represents a great place for that um, from a document storage point of view there'll be companies out there using a server and maybe using a kind of share maybe already using SharePoint as a document management system wondering well what do we need these things for and what's happening at the moment is and I suppose the whole idea is that we need different tools to serve the purpose they were designed to use rather than get try and bend them to be something which we kind of which we uh, want so w businesses will still use SharePoint or a file server particularly a file server for CAD documents and that sort of thing but document storage facilities like um, your kind of formal SharePoint project sites or your file server uh, will remain for things like record keeping, template documents and filing of key key documents, really. Um, Toby, you probably, uh, I don't know if you'd like to kind of add anything to that. Yeah, I think pr probably I think the, th the thing is, it's one of these, um, these uh, sort of how do you use it? How should you use it? Um, teams definitely for for projects especially within the AEC industry is we you know the, we're, all, we're all based around pro project delivery it naturally fits to that environment um, uh, and and it's for that collaborative 
I mean, as you said, we've, I, I, for the people that we've, for my clients that I've delivered, delivered teams training to, we've seen a reduction in emails, but what we've seen is those emails then become better quality. Um, it's, it's not going to get rid of that. Uh, but equally, e equally, it is really good for those quick chats. Oh, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Great. Thanks, Toby. And then some of the uh, common data environments uh, like BIM 360 and Viewpoint aren't going to go anywhere either. Obviously, our clients ask us to use them, uh, so we're going to use them, but also they're fit for the purpose they were designed for, which is sharing really large files, really critical kind of action, action points and specific workflows relating to the administration of a project such as RFIs, um, you know, submittals, etc. Um, whereas Teams is really focusing heavily on short, sharp communication internally, as well as some external external features, but probably not as a BIM level two, BIM level three um, enabler. If you're not. Yeah, Jacob, can I just sort of? It's worth point, pointing out there actually yeah, that sure. yes, there are um, there are uh, lots of other tools out there, likes of likes of Aconex, Procore, Viewpoint, uh, Autodesk 360, that offer and uh, you know numerous features. Um, one thing that teams won't be able to do is that if you've got so a lot of those tools that we've just mentioned those those pl project collaboration tools or those um, common data environments have additional functionality what I call specialist functionality so I tend to split sort of business systems or, or, or applications into two different parts one's business systems team certainly fits in there and one the other the other part is specialist systems like those sort of common data environments those projects project specific collaboration uh, collaboration environments um, they have additional functionality like BIM viewers for example um, uh, really highly controlled document management systems they have their purpose if you're in that if, depending on the type of project that you want Great, thanks, Toby. So, uh, yeah, Teams is kind of here to stay. Um, email and document storage, particularly kind of key key document and records management, um, is a kind of separate separate use case alongside your collaboration requirements. Um, so, uh, I'll just go on to the next slide. So. Um, one of the things which we've had to ask ourselves is, well, why integrate uh, email into Microsoft Teams? You know, why not treat them as two completely separate options? Um, but the overriding feedback we've had from clients is a, if you want to get emails into Teams, it's quite difficult because you're relying on people to kind of get an email address and uh, rely on them forwarding and sending uh, sending an, an email to a to a Teams mailbox. Um, it also can then create a lot of kind of clutter. So you're just sort of taking all of this clutter you had in your inbox and putting it into into Teams, which you know could auto delete after a certain, certain period of time. It probably isn't the best place to put a record which you may need to rely on for a dispute or a claim or something in the future. Um, but but the biggest thing is that we can't control how people communicate with us externally. Some people are still going to email us. We're all using Teams now. The number of emails is probably going up because we're all working from home. Um, but if we're using Teams, they're probably better better quality as well. So um, without, from our point of view, we see a use case for integrating email into Teams and making that process easier. But to be honest, we see businesses using Teams, uh, a SharePoint site in its true kind of uh, rudimentary form, uh, as well as sometimes a kind of file, file server as, as well. So there'll be times where you may want to file internal correspondence, collaboration related correspondence into Teams, which you want to share with that team. But then if somebody emails you about an agreement, an invoice, an approval, something on a project, then that probably needs to be filed somewhere which you're going to need uh, to and be able to uh, search at any at any point for a number of years in the future. Um, not not sure if you want to uh, if, uh, if um, you want to add anything to that, Toby. No, I think you've covered covered that, Jacob. Yeah. Okay. So how we've decided to integrate Mail Manager with Teams. So I'm just going to show you. It's going to be kind of five minutes really of uh, of how. Um, Mail Manager connects to Microsoft Teams. So if I just go to um, this email here from Toby. Um, now, for those who haven't seen Mail Manager before, this isn't designed to be a kind of full demo because for those who have may not want to see it again. Um, but for those who haven't, obviously the purpose of this webinar is uh, kind of designed to cover uh, Microsoft Teams. But I'm just going to show briefly how you can integrate uh, email with Teams 
and kind of effectively create a bridge between all of your inboxes and where you want your data to be stored. So for those of you here, I'm sure um, you've all got thousands of emails in your, in your inbox, some really important to be filed, some you probably wish you never received, and some which need to go into Teams. So um, when it comes to filing, there's a number of ways to file through Mail Manager. I can right click here and I'll have the option to file emails. Now, Mail Manager will use some built-in artificial intelligence, which effectively predicts where an email should be filed based on who's involved in the email. So it will recognize if I've emailed Toby, for example, on this project before, uh, as well as the content of the email as well. But these suggestions here could be on a file server. There could be one, they could be in Teams as well, because part of the modern way of working now is just having to use more than one more than one platform to store information based on the type of information it has. So not using email for absolutely everything, but recognizing that there'll be times where we need to file to Teams and times where we need to file if it's project record related, where it should probably go where the rest of our project data goes. Um, so if I just click file there, it's gonna file that email. So some of you may be looking at this and thinking, well, I'm not sure people are going to, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not, you know, I'm not sure people are gonna right click and file. So what, what we've also developed is the ability to close an email and I'll get a prompt which says, well, where do you want to file it? And this prompt's really important because if you've got people in the business who are your kind of worst filers, hate filing their emails, uh, and you, it's frustrating to kind of work on a project with them, then this prompt gets people filing and makes filing become a habit without thinking about it. So again, I'm being, I'm being told to file something or asked, reminded to file something, and it's telling me where it should, mail manager's telling me where it should be filed. So if I click file there, it's gonna file it to that team. Other people can see it, but importantly, it's filed into the right place. It could be that it's linked to a project and it could be it's linked to um, kind of it's come from somebody external and it's relating to chasing an invoice and we probably don't want to put that in Teams. We want to file it against project record. So I'm going to file it to this Fitzroy Street project. And then just finally, if I want to respond to an email here, I'm going to respond to my colleague called Ben Thomas and say, thanks, Ben. Please uh, follow up with me in a week. Oh. Mail manager can't, mail manager or Teams or Outlook can't teach me how to spell. Uh, so if I click on send, I'll get a prompt which says, well, where do you want to file this response? And if any businesses or any of you are listening to this and you've had to be in a room or on a phone call where you're, you're being asked to think, well, when did I send that? Or where did we say that? Or, or, or what's this person talking about? Filing your sent emails is the worst discipline across industry, but this helps it become a much stronger habit because I'm prompted to file it, but also mail manager files the response, I'm uh, the message I'm replying to as well. So if I press send and file, the email's gone. Um, so in terms of email filing, there's a number of ways to file. We can file to Teams because we just pick them up as locations, basically to point and file emails to. Uh, mail manager will learn who you're emailing and where those emails are typically going. So you'll have your arguments at your office manager, some of your internal colleagues, which they may well be going into Teams, but if you're emailing a client about something, you know, meetings after, a, minutes after a meeting or something, then you're probably gonna want that to go into your general kind of document area. So in summary, if you're filing, if you're filing documents, key documents at the moment to a server or to SharePoint, that will probably remain, but your informal uh, kind of internal collaboration will certainly reside in Teams. Um, one of the areas which Teams and SharePoint don't really address is how to search emails. And we all know we receive too many. So just very briefly, I'm going to cover how to search emails. So we've developed a Google-like search engine, which gives you the ability to go and find any email on any project in a couple of seconds. So typically this is the kind of biggest change to a business because for years there'll be many of you who have only ever had access to your own emails and we think you should have access to all of the emails on a project, uh, obviously providing you've got the permission to do so. So if I um, go through here, I've got 360,000 emails which are being, which uh, mail managers searching. I've been included in some of them. I haven't been included in others. So what I'm gonna do is just type in one phrase across any project. So it could be, I wanna find out a bit more about who ordered a material on site or why it was ordered. So I'll type in Earthwork, for example, and from 300,000 emails to uh, just 19, um, it's, 
it's taking me there in a matter of seconds. If I then said, well, I know the email's got an attachment on it, and very quickly I've gone down to four emails and I'm searching across, it could be hundreds of projects, but certainly hundreds of thousands of emails as well. Um, if I, uh, if I just, I'm just going to move this, um, this, to this zoom window a minute. So, um, what we can also do is if you're in that kind of position, maybe it's a, some sort of dispute or something's got a bit awkward on a project, then we think it's really important for you to have the information available quickly. So what I'm going to do here is it could be, well, I want to look at all of the emails, um, on a certain project, for example. So I'll click in Fitzroy Street and I see all of the emails on this Fitzroy Street project. If I want, if I knew it was relating to a, some certification, I can see that there. The other use case could be, well, I want to search for all of the emails in a team. People have been filing emails to teams. So I've got a list. All I need to do is type in the name of the team. So this one's demo project correspondence. And then very quickly, I've got a list of the emails which we filed in preparation for today. So if you want to store the emails in Teams for people to see them, uh, then that's, that's really important. But if you're using a search tool and you want to use that search tool for everything, not just emails which aren't in Teams, then you've got the option there as well. Because both Teams and SharePoint aren't designed to search through hundreds of thousands of emails, but we know it takes people too much time to do that sometimes. Um, so in terms of uh, that's kind of um, in terms of uh, this webinar that kind of brings us nicely on to um, the kind of summary really really great to see so many people attend this I think there's kind of two takeaways from this I think if anyone wants to learn a bit more about managing email effectively and integrating something like mail manager into your business then um, we'd love to speak to you about arranging a slightly more in-depth demonstration where you can compare what you've seen in mail manager to what you use at the moment. And then if you'd like to really take your Teams implementation seriously and probably recognizing that Teams isn't going anywhere, then um, Toby Chisnell uh, will, uh, will kind of be uh, in touch after, after this and um, we'll be running further sessions in the future. But if you, um, but so certainly if you want to try and put together a bit of a plan to increase Teams adoption internally, then uh, we'll be sharing Toby's details and uh, would really recommend you getting in touch. Um, just a before we close off, a final call for questions. I'm going to go for a couple of others. So um, Toby, uh, kind of be on, be on standby. Um, can we use Teams to telephone people externally? Yes, you can, but it depends on your license type. So if you have got, um, there are, I think it's five different versions. If you've got enterprise version, um, an enterprise license, which some of the bigger organisations have. Yes, you can use you can use it. If you have a business license, um, no, you can't. But it has, does have that functionality depending on your license type. Great. Um, and then uh, David Bulldock uh, can Mail Manager do offline filing? Uh, it would be good if it could to cash for filing when next connected. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we work with uh, hundreds of contractors who are offline all the time. So you can actually file and search emails offline, which is really critical. Uh, Karen, great question on what format is email saved in? It's filed. It's saved in a MSG format. Um, the critical thing about that is that with Mail Manager, you only ever get one copy of anything one copy of an email, as well as one copy of an attachment. Um, Tristan has uh, vented some views towards his IT team. Uh, obviously, <laughs> appreciate IT directors and our team managers work really hard to mobilize their teams to work from home. So uh, I, I perhaps won't, won't, won't jump on that one, but hopefully you get it sorted, Tristan. Um, uh, there's a, qu a couple of questions which have come in on uh, deleting channels. So uh, probably better if you take that one, Toby. Okay, be careful. <laughs> so you, you so as in do the, do the users want to delete a channel Jacob um, I think it's uh, or can you delete a channel can you delete a channel and um, if so when does it um, yes can you, can you delete a channel it's a much better way of asking the question yeah so you can delete a channel providing that you are a uh, one of the owners of it one thing that I would say is um, do be very careful when you delete anything in Teams. Um, bitter experience, um, one of our team members deleted out all of our, one of our plans by accident. Um, they won't do it again. Um, but yeah, it is, 
it, it depends how you set it up, but it can be a little bit difficult to recover items that you've deleted within Teams. It's possible, but you do get, they, they have improved that fairly recently that you do get more warnings about saying you can't retrieve this basically. Depending how your IT department set up, it's possible to retrieve it, but um, you can delete them. Probably wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just going to relaunch the poll to see. I'm really interested if, uh, obviously, if people have found this useful and if further sessions would be would be would be helpful. Uh, like I mentioned, I don't think Teams is going to go anywhere. So I would certainly really recommend kind of thinking about a serious kind of training program for you, the whole of your. Um, I'm trying to use an alternative words, Teams, uh, and I, for the whole of your business. Organization. Uh, yeah, organization. <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, obviously, Toby uh, is a is a hopefully you know uh, you've seen as a really good guy for, for, from today. So we'd recommend that. Um, we're going to relaunch the poll just to see if webinars like this you have found helpful, and if it would be beneficial to run another one. So just while we answer a couple of questions, um, really interested in anyone's uh, feedback. Uh, so I'm just going to go through. Um, Okay, uh, John Taylor saying this has been very good. Thanks, John. Uh, question from uh, Mario. Um, can Mail Manager file into our DMS? Uh, really depends what your document management system is. Mario, we integrate with um, the kind of best of breed um, document management systems such as ProjectWise, Viewpoint, SharePoint, um, OneDrive. Uh, I'm probably I'm probably forget, forgetting some. We've just launched some integration with Synergy as well. Um, so it really it depends on depends on the document management system. The key question to ask there is where do I want the data to go, and is that destination where I want all of the emails to go? Because if you're filing the emails into a system which isn't designed to index and search through hundreds of thousands of emails, it's probably not a good idea. Um, to be honest, the key thing for us is we think staff, people don't really care where things are filed as long as they can file and find it. Um, any more final questions? I can just see a couple of, um, I think I could do some Zoom training to be honest. Um, there's a couple of chat things which have come in. Thanks Paul for your comments. Um, uh, there's another question saying, will there be a fourth season of broad church? <laughs> Um, thanks, Patrick. And uh, can you put a delay on when the email is filed after closing it? Um, it's a good question there, Heidi. I'm not 100% sure. Um, there's, there could be a couple of answers to that, actually. So it's probably something we should pick up separately, but really, really appreciate the uh, question. And then just uh, some nice feedback from everyone. So thank you all for the feedback. Uh, it's really, you know, genuinely humbling to have so many of you on, on a webinar like this. Uh, the plan is to run more, uh, as well as release some of this content through our Changing Construction podcast. So we're due to release a, a, a kind of uh, some advice and guidance on the topic through there through some work with Toby as well. So um, yeah, really appreciate all of you joining. The recording will be shared and look forward to speaking to you about kind of what you thought of the webinar as well as what you've, um, what you've seen in Mail Manager. Thanks very much. And thanks, Toby. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Cheers.